When hair is combed for a while, the comb is found to attract light paper particles. When a balloon is rubbed against a woolen sweater, the balloon is found to cling to the wall. These incidents happen due to static electricity present in the comb and the balloon. Before starting this, we should have a clear conception about the conductors and insulators. A conductor is a material through which electric charge can flow and an insulator is a material through which electric charge cannot flow. A table shows a list of conductors and insulators. What is electric charge? Every matter is made up of atoms. Atoms have nucleus at the center containing positively charged protons and uncharged neutrons. The rest of the atomic space is occupied by negatively charged electrons. The number of protons and electrons are equal in an atom, keeping it neutral. When a material is stripped of its electrons by interaction with another material, then the first material becomes positively charged and the second material becomes negatively charged. The negative charge is due to extra electrons and can move in a conductor. Positive charge is created due to loss of electrons and is in the nucleus which cannot move. When the electrons move, the positive charge in the nucleus seem to move like this. What is static electricity? It is the stationary charge which causes spark, shock or attract very light particles. Where can stationary charge be present? Stationary charge can be present in number one insulators number two insulated conductors which are insulated from the earth how static electricity can be created static electricity can be created by three ways number one by friction here the requirement is two uncharged insulators insulators are of two types one type has atoms which can accept electrons, while the other type has atoms which can donate electrons. They are listed in the following table. The capacity of donating and accepting electrons is given in increasing order. When glass rod is rubbed with wool, the glass rod acquires positive charge and the wool acquires negative charge. When PVC rod is rubbed against silk, the PVC rod acquires negative charge and the silk acquire positive charge. This is called a triboelectric effect. A glass rod is hung by cotton thread and another glass rod is brought near it. They repel each other. Whereas when a PVC rod is brought, they attract each other. But when uncharged metal rod is hung in the same way, the attraction will be still there due to induced charge which will be discussed later. Therefore, we come to the conclusion that like charges repel and unlike charges attract. Repulsion is a surer test for electrification. Number two, by conduction. Here the requirement is two insulated conductors, one charged and another uncharged. When the charged conductor is contacted physically with the uncharged conductor, some charge flows to the uncharged conductor which remain there even after separation of the two. Number three, by induction. Here the requirement is one charged object and an uncharged insulated conductor which can be grounded. When a charged object with negative charge is brought very near to the uncharged object but not touching it, then the electron get repelled to the far end and the near end become positively charged. Now keeping the charged object in that very position, the charge at the near end is called the bound charge and the charge at the far end is called the free charge. This is because this charge cannot move and this charge can move if we ground this object. But if we remove the charged object from position, the bound and the free charge gets attracted and the object become neutral again. To charge this object, we have to ground it before we remove the charged object from position. The free charge escapes. Now remove the hand and the charged object. 
the object gets positively charged. Gold leaf electroscope. Gold leaf electroscope is an instrument to detect static electricity. It consists of a metallic disc which is connected to a metallic plate by means of a metallic rod. A thin gold leaf is fixed to the metal plate. The whole thing is covered by a metal container which is insulated from the metallic rod by means of a rubber insulator. This metal container is earthed in order to remove the induced charge if any. The metallic disc is outside the container. Charging the electroscope. It can be done by two ways. Number one, by contact. By touching the metallic disc with a charged rod. The charge spreads like this and the divergence occurs in the leaf because like charges repel. The electroscope has been charged with the same charge that of the charged rod. Number two, by induction. By bringing the charged rod very near to the metallic disc, bound charge is created on the metal disc which is opposite charge to that of the charged rod. Free charge is created on the gold leaf and metal plate. This free charge is discharged by touching the metal disc while keeping the charged rod in position. Then remove the charged rod. The bound charge now spreads and the electroscope is charged with opposite charge of the charged rod and the leaf diverge again. Detection of charge. For this purpose we need two electroscopes charged oppositely that is one is charged positively and another negatively. Now bring a charged object with unknown charge near the disc of the first electroscope. Two things may happen. The leaf may diverge more. The charged object is positively charged because it pull more electrons from the leaf. The leaf converges. Then the object may be negatively charged or it may be uncharged. To confirm, bring the charged object near the second electroscope which is negatively charged. If the divergence of the leaf of the second electroscope increases, then the charged object is negatively charged. Otherwise, it is uncharged. How is static electricity discharged? Suppose a man is walking briskly in a room whose floor is carpeted with a rug. Actually, while walking, the man has acquired negative charge due to friction with the carpet. Then he hears the doorbell. When he touches the door knob, which is a conductor, electron flows from his body to the knob and he feels an electric shock. This is an example of electrostatic discharge by conduction. Lightning during thunderstorm is an example of electrostatic discharge by induction. And this time the effect may be so damaging that it may burn a house killing many people. How does lightning occur? During thunderstorm there are clouds in the sky which has innumerable water droplets and snow which interact with the rising vapors as they fall down. Due to this friction electrons are stripped of the vapors and the clouds carry negative charge at the bottom and positive charge at the top. This negative charge is growing every moment and becomes so high that it repels electrons in the trees and makes them positively charged. Moisture and air which lies in between these charges gives a path for this charge to get discharged by ionizing the air. When the voltage is high enough, large electric sparks accompanied by thundering sounds are observed. As because the velocity of sound is much lower than the velocity of light, the cracking sound of lightning is heard much later than we actually observe the lightning. Some lightning happen between two clouds and does not reach the earth's surface. Lightning conductors are installed in multi-storied buildings which are made up of highly conducting material and buried deep into the ground. As we know that the electrons always choose a path with least resistance, therefore the electrostatic discharge from the cloud is arrested by the lightning conductor from where it can easily reach deep below the earth's surface and saves the building from damage.